Today in Matt's class, I am gonna share with you the day I saw actual color for reels, with a Z, mind you. So maybe you can identify with this. Are you one of those people that feels like you can't see color or you're really good at drawing, but you're not good at painting. And so you like, you're kind of like, uh, I'm not a painter, I'm a drawer because you've tried color a couple times and failed miserably. Well, I've got a great story for you that may help you a little bit, and I can't wait to share this with you. When I was in college, for the first number of years, I felt like I was pretty good at drawing. I was pretty good at black and white. I could draw pretty good with a pencil, and I was pretty good at inking. But when it came to anything color, especially painting, I was I was awful, not good at all. And I remember I had this one class I was really kind of nervous about because it was a painted illustration class. And the first project that we had was a car. We had to render this car, a shiny car. And I think if not, if I'm not mistaken, the rules were it had to be red. It had to be a red shiny car. So I think I found a photo of like some awesome Lamborghini or something like that. So I drew this car out as best I could and the drawing looked pretty great. It was actually pretty good. When it came time to painting this car, oh my gosh, it was, it was, it was so botched. It was so, man, it was a piece of poo. It was so bad. So what I did is I painted the entire car red because when I looked at the car, I was just like, it's a red car. And there was just this giant red blob. It was so bad. So I started thinking to myself, okay, you know, Matt, you're not stupid. Obviously there's lighter areas on the car and there's darker areas on the car. So anytime I saw something lighter, I took my red paint and I mixed it with white, which actually made pink. And I put all of these pink like areas on the car to make it look lighter. And then wherever the shadows were, I would take black and I mixed it with the red and it made this really awful like almost brown color, like this reddish brown color. And anywhere I saw a darker red, I painted in like this poo color. It was so bad. So I had this blotchy red car with pink and brown. It was awful. Needless to say, I didn't get a very good grade on this project. So I was just one of those students where I was like, you know what, I draw, I'm a drawer, I'm not a painter. And I just, I pretty much just gave up and I was like, it's just, I'm not gonna be good at it. So in this class, I did the awful red shiny car blob. The next project was you had to paint a gold object. We were using gouache paint back then, by the way. So I had to do this shiny object. Now, my teacher said, you want to find something that you really like, because if it's something that you think is cool, you're going to put more effort into it, which kind of made sense to me. So I was trying to think, what's something gold and shiny that I could paint? And I was like, oh, you know what? I've always been into Egyptology, so I thought the coffin mask of King Tutankhamun, or Tutankhamun, depending on how you want to pronounce it, uh, I thought that would be really cool. I uh, drew out this awesome, you know, head mask. And then as soon as I finished drawing it, I was like, oh my gosh, what am I thinking about? I'm only like the biggest Star Wars nerd on the planet. C-3PO is gold and shiny. So I actually, because I was poor back then, I erased my entire drawing of King Tut and I drew C-3PO as best I could. This awesome drawing of C-3PO. But then I was, it was like so dreadful because I was gonna have to paint C-3PO with gold paint. So I'll never forget, I finished the drawing and my teacher at the time, his name was George, he said, all right, next class, be here with your gouache paint and we are gonna begin painting our gold object. So that night I went home and I was like, man, I don't think I remember getting gold paint when I, when I had my supply list. So I looked in my toolbox and sure enough, I had all these other weird colors, but I didn't have gold gouache. So I said, oh my gosh, I gotta go back to the art store. So I went to one art store, hey, do you have gold gouache? Now mind you, I'm actually looking for the color gold. You know how like Crayola crayons, there's actually a color gold and it's like this metallic looking gold. So I went there and asked for gold gouache. They didn't have it. Oh. So I went to another store, didn't have it. I started calling around, you guys have gold gouache? No one has gold gouache. So I go into the classroom the next day and I said to my teacher, George, listen, I went to all these places I called around, no one has gold gouache. 
and my teacher said, what are you talking about? And I said, gold gouache. You said to bring in the gold gouache. He said, no, 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 no. Do you have like burnt sienna and yellow ochre and all the other colors that I was supposed to have for class? And I looked and I said, well, yeah, I got them here. And he said, well, that's what you're supposed to use. And I'm like, what do you, why? How do you, what do you, do you mix? How do you mix them to make gold? He was like, no, 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 no. Let me see your reference. So I showed him my photo reference of C-3PO and he pointed to an area and it was this bright highlight area where it looked like it was absolute white. And he said, what color is this? And I looked at it and I said, white. He said, okay, what color is this? And it was kind of a yellowish color and I didn't know exactly what it was called, it was yellow ochre, you know, it's kind of a brown sandy color. So I looked at it and I said, oh, it's kind of, it's almost like yellow. And he's like, yeah, close. And I looked at all my paints and I said, it's kind of this one. I looked at it, it was yellow ochre. And I was like, oh, and he pointed to like a darker, it wasn't quite black, but it was like this dark brown. He said, what color is this? And I said, ooh, dark brown. He's like, yeah, but what, what is it called in your paints? So I looked and I was like, it's burnt umber. And he was like, exactly. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I started looking and I started seeing color for the first time. So I remember my teacher, he could see the amazement, like the bewilderment, my eyes got really big. And I looked around and I remember looking at the wall. It was a white wall, but in this room, the way that the fluorescent lights were hitting it, it wasn't exactly white. It was kind of an off-white, but there were parts of the wall that were actually a little bit purplish. And so I remember saying to my teacher, wait a minute, this wall is white, but it's not really white. And I remember my teacher going, yeah. And I was like, it's kind of like, it's almost like a light purple over here. And the teacher was like, mm, yeah, I would say so. And I'd say, but over here, like away from the lights, it almost gets a little bit like kind of yellowish. And he's like, yeah, exactly. And I was like, oh my gosh and i saw color for the first time before that like for some reason if i saw a red car or if i saw a photo of a red car i just looked at it for what it was not what i actually saw so a red car was simply red and i would think red paint for a red car or if there was a white wall that wall is white so i would use white straight out of the tube instead of really looking at what color is for any given image. So what happened, and I this is a true story, I did, I spent time on this painting, I put my all into it, I really tried to look at what colors were, and I wanted to share with you guys, this is the painting I did of C-3PO, and I put this in my portfolio, and I remember even when I started working for Lucasfilm, when they saw my portfolio, I remember them seeing this rendering that I did in gouache, and I remember an art director once asked me, after seeing this photo, they said, oh, you make models too? And I was like, models, what do you mean? He said, well, this is like a model of C-3PO. And I said, no, that's a painting. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah, this is, this is a gouache painting of C-3PO. And he was like, wow, airbrush, huh? And I said, no, this was actually just painted by hand. This is just gouache straight out of the tube. And it was in my portfolio up until I got busy enough, thank goodness, that I actually don't even need to have a portfolio anymore because I've been blessed or lucky enough to continue to keep working. But that painting, I call it the first painting I ever did, which isn't true. I had some failed attempts before that. But once my mind was opened and I really truly saw color for what it was, that C-3PO painting was the first painting that I did and it just, it blew my mind when I could see color. So I wanted to share that story with you guys. It was just such an eye opener, no pun intended for me. And it was fantastic and it really, you know, there's all kinds of things since then where like I'm a student for life. So I'm always watching videos on different kinds of color harmony and different things about color. I recently learned that magenta actually isn't a real color. It's actually a trick that our eyes play on us because magenta isn't real, but it's what our minds make up because it's something that has no color. All kinds of things that I'm constantly learning and trying to improve with color, but that was definitely the day that my life changed and I started seeing color truly for what it is and it helped me out so much. And so I hope sharing that with you guys, hopefully it helps you. Ah!